Uh, I'm Dr. Satish Ramalingam, and then basically I am a cancer biologist, gastrointestinal cancer biologist. Uh, I was in US for 11 years working on cancer and then like a GA, can a GA cancer especially. I came back to India and then right now I'm in SRM Institute of Science and Technology. And then like I came to know Srijit uh, since 2015 and I'm very happy to know that he's also working on stem cells uh, because interested in stem cell biology is what uh, uh, like it's the first passion for me. Like I wanted to find how the interested in stem cells are working and then how it is causing cancer. Later, like I moved my research towards uh, diabetes uh, because I lost my dad due to diabetes. So I want to do something in this field too. So today I'm going to talk about what are the uh, what is the project that I am doing in the in that aspect. Um, so the title of my talk is Generation of Pancreatic Beta Cells from Urine Derived Stem Cells. Uh, last time when I came to Trivandrum, I saw a lot of students were there. So I had some introduction slides, uh, but don't worry, I'll keep it short and then I'll finish it in my stipulated time. So introduction. So as we all know, like my, our body has trillions of cells. In fact, we have 37 trillions of cells in your body, uh, which makes up all the organ systems. And then where do these uh, cells come from? They all come from the fertilized uh, uh, egg, like which is a fusion of sperm and uh, egg. And then like uh, this is a zygote. And then like, so until eight cell stage, uh, it will be a totipotent stem cell and then can give rise to the whole organism, like uh, the identical twins. If there is one zygote and then if it splits into two, each one of them can become into an organism, individual organism. So those are called totipotent stem cells. So all the cells in your body has same DNA, but still we have different types of cells. That's because uh, the proteins that are expressed, it's like uh, the library has all the books and then like whichever book, if you take and read, if you take and read the engineering book, you'll become an engineer. If you take and read the medicine book, you'll become a, a doctor or something. So depending upon protein that is expressed in the cell, the function of the cell is determined. And then in that way, we have around 230 types of cells in your body. So. So thanks to the stem cells present in them, because as the cells divide uh, during the embryonic stage or uh, even at the later stage, there are stem cells resides in the adult organs too. So what are stem cells? Stem cells are slow cycling, long lived cells, which are phenotypically undifferentiated. And then when the time arises, when the need arises, it can differentiate into any cell type. Uh, so they reside in a specialized compartment in the adult organs too. And then they are numerically rare and then can give rise to specialized cell types. So the GA cancer, that's what I worked, right? The intestinal stem cells can give rise to 200 grams of tissue every day. So that's amazing. And then similarly, there is equally amount of uh, apoptotic uh, cell death, the programmed cell death that is happening in the intestine too. So there are stem cells, and then that give rise to the cells of that organ. So I already we talked about the totipotent stem cells, and then there are pluripotent stem cells. Uh, these are cells that can give to give rise to all the 230 types of cells that is there in your body. And then there are multipotent stem cells that can differentiate only certain number of cell types, like the hematopoietic stem cells. Those are multipotent, they can give rise to all the cells in the blood, like WBCs, RBCs, and then like different types of uh, WBCs, all those cells can be given rise to from these multipotent stem cells. So what are the sources of the stem cells? So there are uh, several sources people have identified, embryonic stem cells, as you can see, as the embryo developed at the blastocyst stage, there is inner cell mass, and then inner cell mass is a place where you can see the pluripotent stem cell, and these are so these are cells called uh, embryonic stem cells. And then these cells can give rise to all the types of cells, but they cannot become an individual organism like the totipotent stem cells that we have talked before. So, but there are a lot of ethical ethical constraints. You cannot take embryonic stem cells, uh, so it's banned in several countries to do research in embryonic stem cells. So other sources like umbilical cord stem cells. You have seen like uh, people. Uh, recommend you to uh, preserve the umbilical cord stem cell so that it can be used for a future uh, stage of your, of your life, of your uh, baby's life, uh, if, if they need uh, any stem cells for regenerative medicine purpose. Uh, so there are other placental stem cells, dental stem cells. These are the other sources, but all these uh, stem cell sources that we have seen so far are uh, either uh, invasive and then like expensive and then very difficult to harvest. Uh, so, but they have potential. So, several studies in recent uh, has shown that stem cells has potential to become into any cell types that you need. Uh, and then, like, it can be used for treating several diseases which are not treatable earlier, like uh, uh, any of those uh, diseases like uh, neuronal damage or uh, spinal cord injuries uh, or uh, type 1 diabetes. So, all these conditions, it is not cured earlier. Like, uh, there is no cure because we cannot get those cells back. But with this uh, capability of the stem cells, we can 
we can achieve that. And then like, this is going to be the future. So urine derived stem cells, UCs. So recent studies have shown that uh, it is possible to isolate and expand stem cells from the urine. So it was a, it was a, like really surprising for me, like why in, like we release stem cells from your uh, body through urine? Because we know stem cells are uh, having very good potential. So why a body decides to push them through the, uh, through the urine and then like uh, from where these cells are coming. So there are a lot of questions uh, raised at the time and then still people don't have clear answers for several of those questions actually. However, now they are shown that there are stem cells that is coming in the urine and then like there is, there is a barely five to 10 cells. That's what they observed in 2014. Zhang et al has published this fact. So then I decided to isolate the urine derived stem cells uh, and then like from the diabetes patient and then differentiate them into an insulin producing cells uh, so that we can uh, take it back to the uh, diabetic patient. Uh, so this is the objective to isolate and characterize urine derived stem cells. And then second objective is to differentiate the urine derived stem cells to pancreatic beta cells. So this is the cells that are coming from the urine. Urine is a sterile, like uh, though the word sounds like it's not sterile, it's highly sterile because we try to culture them in a uh, LB agar plate and then we don't see any bacterial growth there. So it's, it's highly sterile. And then we grow them in a specific condition media where it will allow the stem cells to stay as stem cells. And then we have, we add the differentiation condition mediums to differentiate that. So before going into differentiation part, we want to characterize whether we have urine derived stem cells uh, that we get in the urine. So we isolated the cells and then like we started uh, differentiating them. Uh, uh, like uh, before that we wanted to validate whether we got urine derived stem cells. So we did RT-PCR analysis with the markers CD73 and CD146. So there are urine derived stem cells that is coming in the control as well as diabetic uh, patients urine sample. Both, are, both the markers are present. However, the CD34, which is a negative marker, uh, which is not there in those cells, and then the gap DH that we used as a uh, internal control. So we see like both control uh, subjects and then the diabetic patients, they have urine derived stem cells coming. So we got the we got the ethical clearance from the institutional ethical committee, human ethical com uh, clearance committee, and then like we started collecting uh, urine from both normal non-diabetic and then diabetic subjects, and then we started performing our further studies. So why diabetes? Because diabetes is a widespread devastating disease currently affecting over 170 million people worldwide and predicted to affect 365 million people by the year to 2030. There are limitations, the uh, hyperglycemia, especially during nighttime, and then uh, hyperglycemia and then insulin injection cost and uh, the cost and the injections uh, pain, and then the transplantation shortage of uh, donors. Like uh, we have a collaborator in uh, Louisville, Kentucky Louisville. Like what they do is that like they get a call uh, telling that uh, a donor is available. So they go and then they take the uh, pancreas out and then they do the islet cell isolation. And then they injected this islet cell through the hepatic portal vein. And then it stays there. And then the success of this study is that like, even after 10 years of this uh, uh, islet cell transplantation through the hepatic portal vein, they, they, they don't require any insulin injection. They are able to survive without uh, any insulin injection because uh, hepatic portal vein and then the cells residing there they can sense the, it's rich in blood supply. So it can sense the amount of blood glucose and then it release the insulin according to the need of the person. So you don't have this uh, nighttime, uh, like increase in insulin production or something. So it's already measured and then release insulin is measured in that way. So, but only difficulty they have is that like uh, this cadaver uh, uh, mediated islet cell isolated where from different uh, person. So obviously there will be immune rejection. So they give like a, uh, immune suppressive drugs, so that's a problem. So that's when we thought uh, we can use the uh, patient's own immune cells from the uh, uh, own stem cells that is isolated from the urine and then differentiating that into an islet cell and then injecting back into the patient so that there won't be any immune rejection. So one is like it's not less invasive compared to the other uh, stem cell isolation methods, cost effective, and then like there won't be immune rejection. And then people have shown that urine derived stem cells can differentiate into all the three uh, terms actually. So this is the experiment they have done. They will get the pancreas and then they will isolate the uh, islet cell and then they will uh, inject it into the hepatic portal vein and then they reside there and then they release insulin. Uh, there are patients who are happy without insulin injection for even 10 years. However, they have to take the immune suppressive drugs, which is, which is tough, which is having its own side effects. So to avoid that, we have planned this study. So we got uh, the urine sample and then like we try to isolate the 
uh, cells from there, and then we also started studying about the difference in the cast and the crystals present in the urine. So we see there is more uh, cells that is coming in the urine of diabetes patient compared to the normal subjects, and then there are more crystals uh, too because the diabetic uh, diabetic nephropathy causes damage in the kidney. So there is increase in all these uh, crystals and casts that is coming out. However, we are uh, trying to count the number of cells in the urine uh, stem cells from the normal as well as the diabetic patients. And then we could clearly see uh, the number of urine derived stem cells was increased significantly. So the mean number of USCs is uh, in non diabetic individual is 8, while the mean number of urine derived stem cells in diabetic individuals is 29. So there is huge number of increase that can be there due to the damage of the uh, kidney of the diabetic patients. Uh, so next step is like we try to differentiate these uh, urine derived stem cells into the cell type the our interest like uh, i've tried to differentiate into bone cell uh, lineage uh, for a uh, for different purpose and then it worked fine too these cells can differentiate into all the three lineages uh, three terms so what are the conditions that i uh, applied to the cells for the differentiation is like uh, we gave high glucose uh, stimulation and then like we gave uh, nicotinamide uh, treatment followed by uh, extending four uh, which is a glp1 analog and then like uh, it has uh, stimulated the uh, transcription of uh, PDX1. Uh, so PDX1 is a uh, pancreatic and duodenal uh, homeobox one, and it's also known as uh, insulin promoter factor one. It's a transcription factor. PDX1 is necessary for pancreatic development, and uh, uh, that includes the B cell maturation too. So we are in the process of still confirming parameters too. Uh, but for right now, we did immunofluorescent analysis to check whether the condition, the control medium versus the differentiation medium, the urine derivative stem cells exposed to differentiation medium, uh, started exposing the PDX1 that confirms that these cells are becoming into a pancreatic beta cell lineage. So there's a significant increase in the number of uh, urine derivative stem cells in diabetic patients compared to the non diabetic. That's uh, one of the important observations we made from the cell. And then increased number of cells and then uh, cast and crystals in the urine uh, segment of diabetic compared to the non diabetic. And then urine stem cells were differentiated successfully into pancreatic beta cells confirmed by presence of PDX1, a yeah, pancreatic cell specific transcription factor necessary for pancreatic development, including beta cell maturation. So, conclusion is the critical shortage of organ available for transplantation because uh, the collaborator he says like there is very less donor available, and then like there is a this uh, immunosuppressive drugs they have to take. So, those things can be avoided if we go through this approach where we can take the a patient's uh, urine derivative stem cells and then differentiate into an islet cell. And then we are we are in the step uh, where we are trying to grow the 3D cultures of the islet cell so that we can inject it back into the hepatic portal vein. So this novel approach can ex be exploited in the future for performing autologous transplantation in the same patient to overcome the immune rejection. So I would like to thank the funding agencies, uh, SCRB and DBT uh, for uh, continuing the research uh, that I have been I have done in the US and then thanks for the funding agencies for funding support from the SRM Institute and Chetinada Academy for the support. So 